Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I've been spending the week with the 2017 Kia Sorento SXL V6. This is a fully loaded vehicle and the wonderful thing about test driving it and spending a week with it is it really gives me a chance to tell you what it's like to live with. Now the Kia Sorento was completely redesigned in 2016, so even here in 2017, the styling's very fresh. And one thing they really did when they redesigned it is they really wanted to have a more upscale and premium appearance. And it's not just appearance, this is actually quite a bit more premium than last generation vehicle. And we're talking about things like the grille here that has a lot of three-dimensional effect going on with these raised bullets, these little diamond-shaped, um, well, it's almost sculpture here. And you have this sort of dog bone shape, which they call the tiger nose. Down here in the lower fascia, they've got a nice piece of trim down there that's got a satin chrome finish, very elegant, I think. And the one thing you might notice down here is there's a blank spot here that isn't quite symmetrical over here. And that's because this does have the advanced driving aids that require a radar sensor to be down there in that lower grill. Down here on the lower part, you can see that we have fog lights. These are what they call ice cube fog lights. They're LED. The headlights on this one, these are HID as part of this trim grade with light bending technology. As you can see when they light up, they're, they're actually very nice to look at and there's a daytime running lamp as well. Wheels on this one, these are the top of the line wheel. It's a 19 inch chrome wheel, very nice looking and there's still a pretty good sidewall there that allows for a little bit more of an off-road trail riding experience and we're going to see that here in just a moment. As we come down the side here, one of the things that I really like what they've done here, especially given the trim grade, is that the body cladding around the fenders and down on the lower rockers, it's body color. I just think that really lends itself to an upscale appearance, especially when we're up in the price range where we are here. Also very nice, the chrome strip down there has a little bit of elegance, but it's not overly done. Also not overly done is the roof line up here. It has sort of an avant-garde appearance. We've got a nice piece of trim up there, the roof rail, satin chrome again. And I just like the fact that it really blends nicely with the spoiler back here without being overdone. It's not too crazy yet, it's still pretty stylish. Now, of course, up here in the spoiler, we have built-in brake light up here that's LED. Down here on the lower fascia, we have a single exhaust tip, not double. I, I really look for symmetry, but it's still not a bad thing. It looks very elegant with the satin chrome trim, both on the lower half as well as right here. Nice bumper protector that's part of the package. It's not an extra option like it is on some SUVs. Inside the Kia Sorento, again, all new redesign as of last year, and just like the last time I tested it, I really like the way this interior is designed. The dash itself has a nice horizontal look, and it's deeply sculpted too. As you can see, it's got some indents, it's got some curves. It really looks like something that was handmade, like a piece of furniture or something. The materials on it, very good. There's some piano black as well as a satin aluminum finish, and that satin sort of carries through from the exterior. And the piano black, although it's not my favorite finish in the world because it always shows fingerprints and smudges and things like that, it does seem to work very well in here in terms of how it meshes with everything else. The materials here, it is a hard plastic around some of the pieces and parts, but it's got a satin finish on it, therefore it looks good. The quality of the switch gear, very much like you'd find in a German car. And there's a lot of features here in this fully loaded grade. These seats, they're both heated and ventilated up front. They're power adjustable. And I do have memory settings over here for the driver. The switch gear over here includes all of the driving aids that you're gonna find in this top trim grade. And on the steering wheel, again, you've got full sets of controls for not only your audio, but your information screen up there in that center instrument cluster, which by the way, does have a huge screen there, which lets you put a lot of information there. The one thing I complain about here on the steering wheel is the knob right here where you can adjust the volume. If you're twisting and turning and doing turning, a lot of times it's real easy for your thumb to hit that and maybe change your station or change your volume. I've had that happen a couple times, but outside of that, little things. Sitting in this seat, very comfortable, uh, very easy to find the spot that I liked. And it does have a comfort feature where when you turn off the ignition, it slides back so you can get in and out easier. And I do like that. The seating position here, looking out, that's a pretty long dash out in front of you. And you really do feel like you're sitting down in something substantial. Now, when it comes to storage, there's a lot of it here. There's a cubby up front here uh, where all the USB and auxiliary and your power ports are. Your phone can fit down there very well. Large phones. It's nice and big. It's easy to get to. You don't have to 
fight with the shifter to get to it. In here, again, there's a lot of storage. I've already got a lot of things packed in here, as you can see. Uh, lots of water bottles down there in the bottom. Four or five water bottles can fit, and then you've got a tray here for things like pens or sunglasses. Cup holders are easy to get to. It's just a very well laid out center console, and your switches for your parking brake, your differential lock drive mode, things like that are all right here. So it's a very good layout, at least up here in front. Your rear seat passengers are going to be pretty impressed back here to start with because there's plenty of room, as you can see. Leg room up here, a lot of space to move around, and these seats are about halfway forward, halfway back, set for my height at 5'9". Uh, the one thing I would say is the seating position is somewhat low, so my knees are perched up just a little bit, but because it is pretty flexible with the space, not a big deal at all. Not complaining about it. These seats are adjustable too. There's a slide forward and back on both of these seats, which really helps for that third row. And also, you've got a recline right here, which really lets you get into that seating position, which again, with the knees being up, really lets you sort of get a comfortable spot. And I like that. You've got a center armrest here that folds down. You've got cup holders there. But here's the thing. There are a lot more features back here because we are in the SXL. I've got HVAC vents. That comes standard on all of them, but heated seats. That's a big deal back here, especially in this class. There are some vehicles fully loaded that you still don't even get the heated seats back here. And of course, you also do have the sunshades, and those are very cool, usually only in high-end luxury vehicles. Now, the third row seat back there, also pretty comfortable. It's not going to fit the largest of adults, but if you are a medium-sized adult, probably about my size or smaller, or kids, you're going to be pretty comfortable back there. And folding these seats down, they do fold down in a myriad of ways. The third row, 50-50. The second row here actually folds down in a 40-20-40 split. So you can do it any number of ways. And the nice thing is, is once they are all down, and they do fold down pretty easy, I might add, fully flat load floor. It's completely flat, and that gives you 73 cubic feet of space. Underneath the load floor, there's a little bit of a storage area there where you're going to find places to put things, but also your jack, because there is a spare tire. It's mounted down underneath the vehicle, but it is, in fact, there. Always a good thing. So I think you've gotten the idea that I really like this interior. Again, the materials are very good. It's appealing to look at. It feels upscale, and that's really the thing here is because this vehicle starts at way down close to $30,000, and we're close to $50,000 here. So when you think about a lot of vehicles out there that are built to a price and when you spend a lot of money in options you get the most expensive one sometimes the interior still feels cheap even though it's fancy well this is the opposite this feels very much it's forty five fifty thousand dollar price tag which means if you don't go all the way here if you get into a base model you still have the same quality that's the good thing about it so the interior gets five out of five stars the infotainment system in this vehicle is one of the best in the business. I said that before when I've tested it in Kias. It's got an infinity back-end sound system, which is exceptional in most cases, as well as the fact that it's got a very easy-to-read touchscreen. The controls, I like the fact that they've got hard controls on each side of it, as well as using that touchscreen. It tends to be pretty easy. Not only are the menus pretty well laid out to where you don't have to page from one thing to another to do the most common things, you do have these buttons on the side as well as a knob for both volume and tuning. It lets you do your most common things without having to play the menu game. Now, the one area where I do have to sort of complain about it a little bit is I use the voice controls don't work so good. That's one area where they could use some improvement. There were several times when I was trying to name a certain place, certain command that it just wasn't picking up on it and because of the way that it works if you're going from climate to navigation to audio and trying to give it some instructions uh, it just doesn't always pick up on it there's a lot of that's when you start getting into menus and really having to know the command so I think that can be improved and the audio it does sound good most of the time but on the satellite radio and of course satellite radio to be fair never sounds as good as either a CD which it has a CD player uh, or sometimes radio. So, But in this particular vehicle, the satellite radio was a little bit weak, so audio quality could be improved in some ways. But overall, this is still a wonderful system. It gets four out of five stars. The engine in my tester here is the top-of-the-line engine for the Sorento. It's a 3.3-liter direct-injected V6. It's rated at 290 horsepower and 252 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission here, which is a little different because this engine is available with an 8-speed and some of the other Kias out there. I suspect that may come along at some point in the future. We do have all-wheel drive here, and with that, this is rated at 17 MPG City, 23 MPG Highway, and 19 MPG Combined. So I always ask the question, when we start this, how does it go? And 
360. Well, here's the thing. This does have reasonably good horsepower, but you really need to rev this engine out to get to it. And that's because it's a pretty small engine for this class, 3.3 liters. And what that means is it is a little bit lower on the torque than larger V6s might be. And torque is usually the thing that you're looking for when you go up to the V6. So that said, um, this engine does have to work pretty hard to give you the kind of power you might otherwise expect for getting up here into the larger engine. And the six-speed automatic transmission, while it does a really good job of shifting and shifts very well, I'll point out, uh, having the eight-speed that they also offer in some of their other cars might do a good job of giving more opportunities for that engine to get to its power peak during the acceleration curve and also better fuel economy. But I will point out that while this is only rated at 17 city, 23 highway, and 19 combined, I actually achieved 23 MPG this week with this thing, which is way well more than promised. So powertrain gets four out of five stars. When I start to think about handling, one thing I like to do is bring the vehicle out here to this road because the pavement out here is actually a very rough pavement. It gives me a good idea of how the chassis and suspension absorbs less than smooth surfaces. And it's a highway, so we can get the highway speeds, a few curves in it. And so what I'm finding here is the first thing is this has a very nice quiet ride at speed. It's very stable, it's supple. And that's what I said last time I test drove this vehicle. It's got a very supple, almost German vehicle sort of ride to it. It's well isolated. There's rubber isolated subframes in the suspension which help it really have uh, a nice sort of soft, supple feel. Especially when you get out here on surfaces, it tend to be a little bit more noisy. It's very quiet and the wind noise very low, even with that big panoramic roof up there. And so as I'm driving around out here, it's not stiffly sprung for a high performance type of drive, uh, but it's not so soft where it feels clumsy either, especially out here where you can throw the vehicle into a curve. And the steering, even though it's electric, it manages to have a decent amount of feel to it and it feels very precise. And you can really throw this thing into a corner with a nice predictable result. But the big question I always have for an SUV or a crossover is, what's it really like when you get it off the pavement? Really, to me, the best place to really see how this is put together is the desert washboard road because this rib surface, even though it's not really hardcore off-roading, really has a way of, cattle guard, really has a way of telling me how well put together this thing is. Does it make the vehicle vibrate? Does it make the trim inside here shudder and rattle? Do I get rattling in the steering or the suspension? And what I'm finding out here is no, none of it. This is exceptionally well put together. I'm not getting any rattling anywhere, even in this big, huge panoramic roof. And they all rattle, but nothing. And a lot of it has to do with what I already talked about a little bit. The suspension has rubber isolated subframes, which go a long way to isolating all the harshness from the ruts and the ribs and the bumps of this road from making it in here to the cabin and becoming part of your life in here. And so what I'm ending up with is a vehicle that just feels of quality out here. So what this is right here is this is a little trail out here. I love to bring these things on. It's not hardcore off-roading, so I'm not rock crawling here. But this is, a, this is a pretty rough little road that's tight. And you really have to be able to maneuver through here and have some ability to get over the rough stuff. And what I'm finding here is that this doesn't feel like I'm beating it up at all. There are some of the vehicles that this does compete with that I bring out here that feel quite a bit out of their element here, but this has a nice, a nice ride out here that doesn't beat you up. And again, you don't feel like you're beating this vehicle up. It just seems to be working well. I will point out though, this all wheel drive system does have a center locking differential here. So while it defaults to front wheel drive most of the time, if you really need it and you want to override the computer, you can press the button there and lock it up so that you get equal power front and rear. So there's that. But overall, this chassis, um, very impressed with its ability to not only be a comfortable and good handling vehicle on the road, but also one out here on the rougher roads that makes you feel just as comfortable bringing it out here. So chassis gets five out of five stars. When we start talking about quality here, very important topic because there's so many choices in this class, different brands, Honda, Toyota, Ford, General Motors. Why not pick the best quality if you can, right? Because quality plays into a lot of different aspects of your enjoyment of the vehicle. The first being when you walk up to it, you look at it, you live with it. What does it look and feel like? Here, 
excellent paint finish, excellent body fit and alignment. The materials are very good inside and out and very little rattles and squeaks as we drove even out on the rougher roads out there. Warranty is the other big thing. This actually has one of the longest warranties in the business. 10 years, 100,000 miles for powertrain. 5 years, 60 bumper to bumper and 5 years, 60 for roadside assistance. That is quite literally top of class. So quality score comes in 5 out of 5 stars. On the topic of safety, a very important thing to me because even though I don't use it as part of my scoring, it's something that we should all look at when we're shopping for a car. So here, as you can see, IIHS top safety pick. Now it's not a top safety pick plus, even though it got a good score in all the crash tests, but this year they rate headlights as part of their overall scoring for that plus. And headlights on this one only get a poor rating in those tests. So beyond that, this performs exceptionally well in the crash tests, top safety pick. All right, my friends, wrapping it up for the Kia Sorento. I like it. I like it a lot. In fact, I like it so much it goes on my I'd buy it list for 2017. If I were shopping in this category, I would totally spend my own money on this vehicle. And that makes it the second time this vehicle's made it to the I'd buy it list. Same thing happened when I test drove the 2016 model in the 2.0T. And in fact, if I were choosing one of the two engine, I'd, I'd probably be very happy with the 2.0T simply because I like the way it drives. It's got a nice power curve and it does offer that fuel economy and plenty of power for me in my opinion. Now, as we look at the price for this one, $46,990. That is top of class. That is top of this vehicle. We're fully loaded here. And I really do think that offers a good value, especially when compared to other brands, because there are some brands that you can't get some of the features here for this price. And it just really goes along with the total quality experience, the driving experience, everything really comes together in a nice package. So value, I put it five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. Very good. You know, one thing about this vehicle, the way this is designed, you can totally get the gangsta lean going here. I just don't have the baseball cap. Anyway, if you enjoyed the test drive you just saw, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking on the big round logo right there. And we also have a test drive of the 2.0T Sorento right there at the big square. Either way, stay tuned.